What's up guys, Sendo here and welcome to my first ever gameplay of Crash Bandicoot 2 Vortex Strikes Back I know this is kind of a weird way to start off a series since this game has a previous title to it but out of the three games in the trilogy, this was my most favorite so yeah Without further ado, here's my gameplay of Crash Bandicoot 2 <laughs> Crystals, of course. But Dr. Cortex, to reach full power, we need not only your master crystal, but also the remaining 25 slave crystals from the surface. How do you expect to retrieve them when we don't have any earthbound operatives left? You fool! Do you think I'm unaware of the situation? If we don't have any friends left on the surface, then we need to find an enemy. Crash? Crash? Crash! My battery is fried. Make yourself useful, big brother, and bring an extra battery for me. I try to keep most of the gameplay in this video since I kind of wanted this to be sort of a walkthrough-ish series. But I'll cut some of the parts that will be redundant like some backtracking when I die or something like that. And I'll try to get as much commentary in as I can, but don't expect much since I'm not really that used to actually speaking English, so do go easy on me. It is kinda weird that I'm confident with writing English, but when it comes to speaking... Oh boy. I don't know, I guess I'm just not that used to it. Anyways, intro stage, done. for the crude means used to bring you here, but I rather expect a written invitation would have been turned down. I need your help. Surrounding you are a series of five doors. Through each door lies a well-hidden crystal. The crystals look like this. Bring me the crystals, Crash. That is all I will say for now. We will speak again. Pretty much one of the reasons that I haven't skipped the cutscenes is that the game is pretty straightforward with actually giving hints when you allow it to. And if you didn't know, if you actually skip the opening cutscene, you are directly sent into this warp room, skipping the intro stage. So, sucks if you can't get those little goodies back there, huh? Well, let's not drag this on for too long. I'm just gonna start off with a save, and off we go to the first stage, Turtle Woods. Another thing to note here is that I won't be pinpointing every single thing to commentate on since I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about Crash. What I am going for is a nice walkthrough on how to run Crash 2 efficiently. Like starting off, getting the blue gem first for this stage. You can get the regular gem first, then the blue gem, but by doing it this way, it kinda saves time due to a thing called death warp, which I'll demonstrate later on. Another thing that's going to be apparent in this gameplay of Crash 2 in particular is the maneuver trick that I'll try to implement as much as I can. Keyword being try. It's called the neutral slide spin. What that means is that by doing a slide, by letting go of the directional buttons and doing a spin while Crash is in sliding position, Crash will carry the slide's acceleration over to his forward spinning motion, effectively increasing Crash's overall forward speed. While it's kind of a risky move, since if you're not used to it, it's hard to actually maneuver yourself sideways. But it still helps cutting some seconds into runs, and I'm just trying to implement it as much as I can as well. The reason that I haven't been getting all of the boxes in this stage, is that it's an actual requirement to get the blue gem. And here it is! Now I'm just going to kill myself here. And with that, I have executed the death warp. Meaning, that any crystal or gem obtained prior to the death is still kept in your inventory. 
With this strat, you save time by not going back and forth from the warp room. While this may be a bad idea since you lose a life, this game is very generous with lives anyway. To be honest though, on the contrary of most people saying that they got the blue gem by accident, I on the other hand, actually got it through curiosity. I think that makes sense. I have always wondered what the 0x0 zero zero box requirement meant whenever I tried to re-enter this stage, asking myself, where's the gem, where's the gem? At first I thought it was a game bug, and then I just tried to actually not get any boxes, and there it was. I was blown away when I first discovered that. Man. Old games and their meta secrets, huh? So I guess I'll try to explain the glitch jump since it's a useful move in Crash 2. I highly doubt it's going to be applicable for the Insane Trilogy, but hey, if Vicarious actually cares, <laughs> that'd be awesome. Anyways, the glitch jump. To do this, you basically just need to do a spin right after jumping from a slide or crouch in quick succession. It raises crash higher than a usual jump does for some reason. Like here, you can't reach this platform with a simple slide jump. But a glitch jump on the other hand, there. So I guess that's pretty much all of the explaining that I need to put out there the essentials for an efficient crash 2 run and completing this game 100% and of course I will not be promising a no death run oh well what can I do I'm not an expert I will try to make this series into a one warp room per video kind of deal, so Crash 2 might be done in 5 videos. More if I'm going to be cocky, but I think I have some confidence in doing a smooth run, I think. Also one thing to note is the ability to do a slam after a glitch high jump which provides additional hang time with the jump itself. This happens because Crash is only able to do a slam when he's in an idle jumping position. He won't be able to perform a slam after a normal slide jump but since spinning reverts him back to his regular jumping position, you're able to connect it with a slam giving you the potential to reach even greater heights. This will be helpful later on once we enter the second stage snow go for the red gem. Uh, spoiler alert? And with that, Turtle Woods is complete. Suits, I have stumbled across a force that threatens to destroy the world. Crystals are the only means of containing it. The fate of the world is at stake. It is imperative, therefore, that you bring them to me. Good thing I have kinda covered everything that I needed to cover, so that I can actually concentrate on the gameplay itself. Anyways, on to Snowgirl. Yeah. <laughs> 
I do have to pinpoint that whenever Crash is in third mass form, the neutral slide spin is virtually useless since it doesn't work the same as when he's not in it. I don't know why, but it just does. So here's the red gem. There is a long section that you actually need to run through. God damn it. And drop in this section to get the gem. But screw it. I ain't got time for that. Yeah. Do forgive me for the lack of non obvious commentary. To be honest, there's so much that you can say on a game that's arguably known by everyone and having to play it yourself when you already know what's going to happen. Again, my aim for this series, or just Crash 2 in particular, is to portray an uninterrupted walkthrough while trying to point out useful hints without the inconvenience of stopping the video. Or you could, if you don't understand what I'm saying. I think it's only going to be unique for just this playthrough in particular. The Insane Trilogy is fast approaching and Crash 2 is just a good game to me. It's particularly structured in a way that you can finish the game in one go without the need for backtracking if you know what you're doing. Crash 3 is good, but I don't know. It's just my opinion. Oh yeah, these wireframe boxes? There's the switch up there. Yeah, Naughty Dog, you cheeky bastards. They really like their off-screen stuff. I could skip these Wumper Fruit, but eh, might as well go for that 99 life cap as soon as possible. And with that, snow go is done. Off to hang eight. And there goes the timer. Despite there being a timer, I will try to break these boxes so that it kinda saves time when doing the death warp later on. And yeah, I just got hit by that because I'm so good in this game. I will skip this bonus round and this blue gem route because... 
This is why I hate the analog stick sometimes. My thumb just kinda creams off to the side at times and thus putting me in awkward situations. I could use the d-pad but it's kinda noisy which is why you're not really hearing much from my end. But yeah, I intentionally skipped the bonus round and the gem route because I had to hurry up for the timer for the gem. And I'm still going to kill myself anyways for the box gem. They're all good lord. My analog plus thumb synergy at work, folks. That was a plain bonus round. Oh yeah! Which jumping mechanic did you guys like out of the three crash games? I know Crash 3 had a little bit more realistic feel to it due to the added momentum when jumping. Like whenever you try to land on a box, Crash will still move forward instead of completely stopping when you try to not move with the directional buttons. In Crash 2, like here, he actually stops upon landing on a box instead of being pushed a little bit forward. I just find it weird that Naughty Dog tried to revert back to that of Crash 1. Crash 2's jumps are made more precise, but I don't know, I just find it weird to be honest. Uh, I don't know what happened there, but okay. There you go. I'm not really sure what's the point of that platform over there. There is a specific maneuver that makes you jump harder than the glitch high jump, but I can't do it, so I will never know what happens if you reach that. <laughs> Just a casual boost. And with that, three stages are done. I see you are getting the hang of it. I need to conserve power. I will communicate with you again after you retrieve the fifth crystal. <sighs> the pits. Kind of a very bland stage to be honest. I know there's the backtracking, but the stage is just too plain to me. Oh, my God. 
Let me grab these two boxes. There. It's just to lessen the burden of backtracking in that path later. Since if you can tell, I was not looking forward to this level. Oh nice, the first death. What did I tell you guys about no death ones? Yeah, exactly. Not today, mate. Oh boy, that was close. And I die to that. <laughs> Screw this turtle. I don't really get the point of these metal boxes. They're just there to break the pace of the game. We're done, let's not speak of this level again. So, Crash Dash. One out of many things can go wrong with this run, but I just hope I'm lucky enough for this. Just a little side note, no pun intended, Crash won't do the animation if you're facing to the side.
I'm not even gonna attempt that. Wait a sec, let me just... No! 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 What? Let's not try that. You know what? Screw this. Oh wow, I actually made that? Told you guys, luck was on my side. Except for that part earlier. Listen up. We are not without enemies. Some of them you may even recognize. Although they cannot harm you inside this warp room, they can attack you on your way to the next one. To get to the next warp room, use the platform that appears in the center of the room. Good luck. So that's five stages down and off to the boss. Just a little note guys, these aren't a threat. For the nitros, just don't step on them. Yep, a very thrilling boss fight. You know what, let's just bounce on his head a few times. Weird that he himself doesn't have a damaging hitbox. <laughs> I see that Ripper Roo failed to prove much of a challenge yet again. But back to business. There are crystals to be gathered. Twenty to be exact. The planets will align shortly, all thirteen of them. And this will create a power great enough to rip the Earth apart. Properly utilized, however, the crystals can absorb and contain the energy. I don't have 
have much time to tell you this. You have to be careful. Trusting Cortex seems a little unwise. Crash! I can't keep the data pack open this <gasps> Crash! You need to find So yeah, that concludes the first part of the series. Do let me know if this is a good format for my Crash 2 pseudo walkthrough since I want the next few videos to the series to be in the same format but if it's too long for you guys, let me know and I'll try to mix it up. Anyway, stay tuned for more of this and I will see you guys in the next one. Except to retrieve them when we don't have any third-party operatives left.